What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another uh, movie commentary watch party. I don't, I don't even know what you want to call these at this point, because um, we do kind of go off on tangents. Uh, if you haven't guessed already from the artwork <laughs> on, on on this side, uh, we're doing the houses October built, and I'm joined by none other than uh, the reptilian Tomcast. By I I don't remember all your aliases, to be honest with you. Tomcat, a.k.a. Tom Thompson, a.k.a. the Raptilian, a.k.a. Funky Master Fuck Fox. I don't know. I thought this was a random nice. one. Nice. I feel like <laughs> you'd make a really good pro wrestler, to be honest. I probably would. I would th- I would create a, a dope um, character, that's for sure. And yeah, we will and my like we'll get into it. Like actually my brother is willing to come on uh the Chris Benoit episode because he's super in he like grew up loving wrestling. We did backyard wrestling. So even that fans out there, that might some wrestling content might come down the pipe hole. Um because some of it's fucked, man. Like the Owen Hart shit, and there's a lot of crazy there's things. There's a lot wrestling. of stuff behind that Owen Hart story uh that's i love to talk about that it's yeah that's not talked about that often and, and i also was a huge wrestling fan for a long long time um oh that's that that, that beer that yeah did i see on that can somewhere it said something milkshake yeah it's an ipa milkshake so for everybody listening it sounds weird but it's delicious it is uh 11 30 a.m on a monday but I decided to partake since it was kind of like my birthday celebration weekend. It's a 6% beer, a blood orange milkshake IPA. Do you never try to milkshake IPA? No, just the, the sound of that. It sounds weird, but it's delicious. It's called Howl to the Moon, and it has like a werewolf on it, like chugging beer. It's fucking sick. It's sad how easily I can be sold on something like that. If the Yeah, I saw I saw I was like, you can buy it because we went to like a brewery. And they have like all these different kinds. You can just kind of try it. You can do the taste tester. They have like delicious food. And then, um, so I saw this one. I saw there the fridge where you could buy them. And I'm like, I'm fucking for sure getting one. So I got a whole pack. So I was like, I'll just like randomly podcast drinking this shit. That's what happened to me uh, a couple of weeks ago on that Halloween thing. I bought that shitty bottle of red wine just because it had a cool uh, label on the front. (laughs) And we all know how that turned out. I had to retire my Riddler costume. (laughs) Yeah, that's funny. I feel like you kind of became a character wearing that costume. Dude, I swear to God, right? The jacket and everything is is over in the corner of the room. And I walked past it earlier and I was just had shivers. I was like, oof. <laughs> that is so funny. Yes. But uh, you're gonna, you're definitely going to drink for the Christmas special. Just nothing straight. Yeah, I'm just not going to be that retarded ever again. No. Um, like, that's why, like, me and Billy learned that shit, as I said before. It's like, you know, just beer or mixed drinks because there's a lot of episodes we've done that either we've had to cut or we're like, oh, like we got to end this now. There's, there is at least probably three, four times where we got too drunk to even record an episode. And they were like, let's just watch music videos and talk because we can't function right now. It's yeah, happened. Well, at least I've learned my lesson this early on in the journey. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I, um, I took a while. Yeah. So I suppose before we get into this, uh, I've never seen this. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, I like I'm a huge haunt fan as well. Um like I love haunted attractions so much so and we I've mentioned talk this. About it. Yeah, I've I've mentioned this multiple times but like uh, I used to travel to up until covid basically I would travel to Florida every year to do Halloween Horror Nights for like 2 3 weeks. That's would so spend cool, man. an absurd amount of money just to do yeah, it. I, was like, I don't know how you afford that. You must be in debt. <laughs> it was one of those things and it was just like oh it's fine though right i'll just live 50 weeks of the year in pure misery and then i'll have yeah. two weeks of fun and then go back to being miserable again for another year um so yeah I, like horror movie about haunted attractions and it's kind of found footage like mockumentary style as well it looks scary when i saw the trailer even chelsea was kind of interested in watching it i'm like i'll have to watch this with you again but I, I think it's kind of fun because obviously I love horror and I'm a huge horror fan, but there's just some stuff I never watched. And I always saw this one. You have both the Blu-ray and the DVD. I have the sequel oh. as well. But the, the so this was a Best Buy exclusive. Um, That's cool. And it, it actually comes with the original full length documentary that inspired the film. So they basically shot a movie. And then when they went back and looked at it, they were like, you know what, we could actually make this into like a horror movie more so than a documentary. So they went back and then shot the entire thing again as like a scary movie. 
That's actually such a cool concept. Like the idea of it's it is kind of cool. I like that it's like found footage, like you know, going through a haunted house and even on the if we if we would have got to on the live special, I had a bunch of like haunted attractions to show the walkthroughs, which we can always bring back for next year, so to speak, because there's tons of them, right? Um, there's a thing called uh, 3D attraction, 360 attractions, and it's pretty cool. Yeah. He goes to all these attractions and films it, um, but like. It's fun to me that like, especially for the audiences and even people that just enjoy listening to the commentary even without watching the movie is I think, I think you should watch the movie, but um, I've never seen this. And to go into some of these films that I've never seen, uh, well, might be an interesting take. Cause I'm just going to say what my raw thoughts are. Right. And right before we get started, uh, yeah. just to give everybody a breakdown, cause I don't know, some people will or won't watch the movie, but um, this is like a, a a breakdown of the storyline. So beneath the fake blood and cheap masks of countless haunted house attractions across the country, there are whispers of a truly terrifying alternative. Looking to find an authentic blood curdling good fright for Halloween, five friends set off on a road trip in an RV to track down these underground haunts. Just when their search seems to reach a dead end, strange and disturbing things start to happen and it becomes clear that the haunt has come to them. That's fucking, it sounds like the, the trailer looked pretty trippy. Uh, I always saw this movie, but I was like, there's some movies where I'm like, oh, it looks low budget. Should I try it? But I like that I have you and even Anton to be like, hey, is this good? Should I watch it? But now, because we're doing this stuff, I'm always like, why don't we just create content out of it? And we'll just watch it together and record because it makes more sense to me. Yeah, and I feel like, look, it's a... Uh... It's kind of like a double whammy in a way because either you watch the movie and we just spend an hour and a half talking shit about it and it's funny yeah. or we watch the movie and we both enjoy it and people still enjoy Talk listening shit. to it. Yeah, like so it's like yeah. it's a win-win really like. I know because even um, when we did the monsters, like I liked it, but we talked a lot over it. And then I had to, I finally rewatched it when I was on mushrooms actually. And it's fun. It's such a fun film. So like, I like getting into the, especially when we start getting in these scary, dark horror movies, it's cause I'm in a dark room by myself with a fucking light on like a blue light. Like it will be creepy to do some of these films. Um, especially ones I haven't seen. Yeah. There's, there's a, a lot of stuff really, coming. I think there's a couple of really fucked up ones. Uh, I want us Great. to do just to see like the reactions. Up on the fucking stream. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's one in particular that has that in the movie. People throwing up and stuff. Oh, nice. It's like a chainsaw one? for beginners or whatever. It's like oh it's like yeah, chain, yeah. Th- those are those ones. Beginners. Um, I seen those in Spencer's or somewhere. Yeah, um, They're like comedy shirts. Yeah, and I was like, I was looking for that one, and I was looking for there's a. There was one I really wanted, and I went to like four or five Spencers and couldn't find it. It was I can't remember the the caption on it, but it was something to do with aliens, and it had like that generic like green alien with the big black eyes, and like to I talk went, to strangers. Yeah, that, I, I, have think that, that dude, I have that one. I have that one. I went crazy looking for that. I couldn't find that anywhere in New York. I love that shirt. I'll fuck it. I, I could give you it later on. Like, like that's like it, I, I don't know why, but instantly as soon as I walked in, I was like, no, don't care about any of the horror movie stuff. Yeah. I was like, I want that shirt. It's so funny. Um, I, like you know, you've said before, and for the fans that are like starting to get to know us a little more, it's like sometimes it is like how you said, looking in a mirror because we think the same. I love that shirt. I have it. I also have the one where it's just like. Uh, um road trip or some shit like that is an alien with like kids in like a vat like abducted and shit like that it's fucking i like these shirts chelsea got a bunch of them for me for my uh for my birthday there's like a scream one i have and then i also have like a alien from the movie alien one where it's mm-hmm. like a comedy of these kids like it's like a one of those comedy shirts it's fucking fun i got a i think the only one i actually picked up was a poltergeist one I can't dude. like I have so many shirts, dude, and I can't get rid of Same. them. I just want to keep them. I'm like, what if my kid wants them? Like, <laughs> you know, or like the idea of like, you know, I had a lot of friends with dads that had like old punk shirts, like Sex Pistols or Ramon shirts, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that shit is cool as fuck. To like have a, that stuff later on in life. I had a Rob Zombie shirt I got in Hot Topic when I was like fucking twelve, and I you wore that. I, I swear to God, dude, right? I think there's photographs of me wearing that shit when i was like 19 and like, was <laughs> that's like, so funny there was like holes in it and like the arms were like falling off the t-shirt and like i found it recently and i was like oh, i wish i could put this on me number one i've put on way too much weight and number two it's just like falling apart i was like i look like a fucking homeless 
Yeah, the, even like there's some shirts I have where I'm like, I gotta keep them, but they don't fit, and I was like, I'll lose weight eventually. Then I keep telling myself <laughs> that I'm like, oh, it doesn't fit me. It looks horrible, and it makes me look like overly obese. And I'm like, okay, I'll I'll hang on to this because I am gonna lose weight. It's like, yeah, I, I do that same thing. I had tons of shirts like that. Um, yeah, we'll bring it in soon. Uh, I just want to say, yeah, I had a buddy that um his dad had a ripped like Sid Vicious shirt that Sid Vicious wore. Oh wow! I was like. That's pretty cool, isn't that? That yeah. Yeah, a lot of, a, he like was a roadie for Metallica for a long time. It has like a bunch of stuff like that and it's kinda cool. Like the shit you would see, he has all these like vinyls and, and things and, and stuff from concerts and kinda cool to do that job and it's stressful at the same time. They're they're people and stories that I would love like I love hearing. You know, those guys who were like, you know, work yeah. on a crew or something with like whether it be movies yeah. or music and stuff like that. And I always feel like they have all these like really unique, bizarre stories. Um, no, for sure. Because the to, shit you would see like, yeah, it must be interesting to live a life like that. And then, you know, maybe when the tapers down and you kind of, you know, you're getting to retirement age and you sit back and you're like, Phew, I had a fucking weird life. I live. Yeah. No, my, and my buddy's dad was weird. Like he's just a weird dude. And he was like, my mom came over the one time and picked me up when we were like teenagers. And she, he's like, I know you. And she's like, he's like, you grew up around here? And mom's like, no, I grew up in Toronto. And he's like, no, no, we, you went to school. And my mom's like, no, I don't know you. Like one of those guys that thinks he knows everybody. So everybody, when you bring it in, so this should be on Prime. It should be free on Prime. Uh, you could probably find it in other. There's, it's probably, it could even probably be on Tubi. It's probably everywhere because it is, it uh, is a yeah. low budget. It's more of a low budget film. Um, so we want it. Bring it to uh, in the film just at the beginning. It's uh, the one o one, yeah, one o one room one o one ink. So just before that it should be a black screen that should come in. So obviously people that are listening to this and want to enjoy the commentary, pause just before the 101 logo and we should be able to all be kind of synced up together at least close enough where everyone can enjoy the movie and hear my first opinions i'm pretty i'm actually fairly excited for this because i have not seen this and i think it's gonna be uh this seems crazy and scary actually oh man okay you ready queued up yeah Sorry, because yeah, I was moving it back and forward. I was trying to get it exact. Let's fucking do. I have it right. It's what black. It's, the screen should be black right before the room one hundred and one. And then, uh, Aaron, do you want to count us in? What do you want to go on? Whatever, I don't care. You know okay. me. Whatever. We can go one, two, three, and then go. When I say go, everybody, you press play, and we're gonna have the for the uh, like audio listeners. Um, just make sure you go on that go. But obviously, for the video listeners, you'll be able to see the counter and hopefully queue up uh, at the same point at the one hundred and one room. Okay, everybody, got your mm-hmm. shit ready? Yep. All right. One, two, three, go. Okay. Awesome. <sighs> This is like what 2014? Yep. I'm surprised I've never seen this. This looks fucking I'm kind of creeped out. I got a bong I, hit ready. I'm fucking excited. I love this. I was movie. excited to do this. And and you know what, right? If you do end up enjoying this, um we should definitely do the sequel. This so this is one of those rare occurrences where the sequel is equally as good. Awesome. Okay, I have to try the, I, I'm not I'm not a fan of subtitles. At all. Really? I, do, I like default to that now. Oh, you're like my brother. My brother loves subtitles, puts subtitles on everything. I just can't stand it sometimes. Chelsea likes it too. I see as well. Sometimes like I, I have a kid, so there's nights where I basically have to watch a movie through subtitles and it just completely takes me out of the experience. Yeah, you have to read it the whole time. This is always something that I wanted to do was to be able to have my own haunted attraction. Oh, I would do that. The thing is, I would do mine in like a serial killer way. Like have like a, you know, and they they people have done this, but I would do it like a to a T. It is fun that they're showing like haunted attractions. 
And like, yeah, that's a lot of times what you do is you slowly walk through it. We were just talking about Chelsea when we went to one and it was just a one in this town called Waterford and they have like a big pumpkin fest and it's kind of fun. And then we we're in this like high school haunted house and she like grabbed the guy's shirt in front of her. And my dad's like, tell my dad the story. He's like, did you know the guy? And she's like, no, I just was scared. <laughs> like grabbed the guy in front of me. And and these are all um these are all actual attractions. These weren't just made up for the the movie or anything. That's cool. They, yeah, yeah, they because actually you went to it's you have <sighs> This is real? Uh oh, yes. That's, that, that's the chick hanging herself is real. And it was there was stuff like um where it was a real skeleton used and they didn't realize. That's crazy. We've talked about this stuff before on the podcast about um, flying footage was shot by five friends during an extreme hot road trip in October 2013. Um, how in during plays, people were like, oh, like the one guy he like went to like cut his throat with a fake knife. And for some reason, there was a real knife like on like set there during the play and the guy like this is a real story the guy legitimately cut his own throat which is fucked and some of these haunts too they go like i feel like you could um have a heart attack if they're if they push you too much if you're essentially stuck in one where it's like well you need to go this way to go the exit or you can't leave yeah like there's some of them um I want to say there's one in New York, and I think it's in LA as well, called Blackout. Mm. Uh, and there's another one, I can't remember the name of it, but like, you basically sign a waiver that they can essentially do anything to you. Like, you, it, I think on the waiver it says you're going to be exposed to like graphic sexual stuff, and that they can put their fun. hands, they can put their hands on you, and they can this and they can that. And like, I think there's shit, <laughs> there's like scenes in it, like where a dude is like pretending to like jerk off or something and then he takes off the the condom and like syringes the stuff from inside of it and like squirts it into your mouth or some shit like that and they have you like fishing around in like toilet bowls and stuff that Full sounds fucking... fuck see i'm not into that shit like yeah i would go through all, i just don't my thing is i don't like being touched yeah and especially I don't want, don't want anybody all. inject and i know obviously you know he he didn't fucking he didn't come into a syringe and shoot it in your mouth, but even just the idea of that whole thing and like the dude is nude during all this, yeah, as well. And like they make you it's get that down guy on your from knees. Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> that guy always seems to be naked. Like, why are you always naked, man? <laughs> Put your dick away. <laughs> it's just so funny. Like watching some, we were watching some of the live concerts of Red Hot Chili Peppers, and it's. It's like why do you the whole time it's like it looks like it's cold and you're dancing around naked. Such a weird dude as well. I know. So uh, as a fan of I suppose Halloween and, and haunted attractions, I can kind of see the allure to being like, okay, we've done like every attraction that you can think of, you know, hay rides, corn mazes, uh universal, all the different things. Now it's like Okay, what's the next step up from this? No, I agree of like, because if you're doing it all the time and you want to build it up more and you want to get more and more scared, which even my brother suggested, we should definitely do like a live stream or try our best to do it in a haunted attraction. There's even a place near me called Fear Farm and it's pretty good. It's obviously not like Universal Studios, yeah, yeah, but course. it's pretty good. They have a pretty good haunted hayride where it's just like there's stuff all up in the air and there's like a guy hanging and they have like a got a lot of fun stuff that like triggers and stuff like that when you go past it. It's not bad. Like the one that you read, I've only been like once, well, I think once. And um, they have a big cool open mouth when you walk in the entrance and and they did they in Area 51 haunted attraction, which I thought was cool. So, like see, had, sometimes, like, right? Sometimes I actually prefer those kind of attractions than I do something like Universal or Six Flags, just because yeah. I think they have to be infinitely more creative with what they have. The for sure is Six Flags any good though? I'm sure that one's pretty good. Yeah, I've been to that once. Um, Fright. I've Fest. never been to Six Flags. I've been to Eight Flags though. 
That was just a gay club in Toronto. I just joking. <laughs> Stupid jokes I make. Um, yeah, th- th- that's good. Like, obviously, again, it's a step down quality wise from something like Universal, but yeah. I like how they're splicing this like footage together to make it seem a bit more. Yeah, so do I. Because because this footage, I don't think like you're seeing clips here of people being scared and stuff. They didn't. I don't think they just shot that for the sake of the movie. Like it's actual footage from haunts. That's pretty cool, man. Like, and that shit's fun, man. You get the energy and stuff like that. Like, you know, you're not gonna get hurt most times. Like, if you go to like the main ones, but it is. Uh, I love haunted attractions. I haven't been to like as many as I should. Like I've been to the Wonderland one, um, mm-hmm. which is now so overpacked. It's not even fun. You see, like, and that's what happens I, to a lot bad. of these things. There's one here in Ireland, um, and it's on like a, I think I mentioned it a couple of weeks back. Uh, I had went there. Uh, it was the day after Halloween we went, and um, it's on this like 200 acre farm in like the Midlands in Ireland. It's it's like an hour, about 90 minutes on a bus from the capital dublin basically into the middle of nowhere and uh really cool setting they had some really cool haunts but super overpacked this year it was like there's yeah there was footage from wonderland and they're like they're haunted whatever it's called the halloween haunt or whatever and it was like packed full of people where it's not fun even the one time we went their their attractions like their haunted attractions are fun but you walk through it like literally shoulder to shoulder with people and it doesn't make it scary they should put a cap on how many people go through them and how a cap how many people get into the park they just want to fuck it they're greedy so those like as take as much money as they can and then the it will the experience will suck for people, to be honest. So the, this dude here with the sunglasses on? Got the shirt missing? Uh, yeah. The bearded uh, boy, let's yeah. See. Yeah, that guy. And the guy who's yeah. recording right now. He kind of has yeah. long-ish slick back hair. Yeah. Those two guys are brothers in real life. Really? Mm-hmm. And then that's the the guy with the short hair and the checkered shirt. Yeah, Zach. He's um he's like their best friend in reality. Yeah. So these are all friends pretty, in real life. I'm, really? Yeah, yeah. These that's are all, and cool. they're using their real names as well. I would love to do this, and I do think there is a potential that in the next couple of years we could make a short film. I think if me, you, and Anton put our fucking minds together, I think we could create some sort of crazy, even hour flick, like an hour, like crazy movie and shoot it. And because Billy will act in it, Billy won't, if doesn't give a fuck, he'll just like tell it. If we tell him what to do, he'll do it. I love the idea She's of pretty, this. But I don't, I was going to say, I'm not into dark haired chicks. Usually, like, I like a I think she's... brunette or, or blonde. I'm just pretty much into anyone that'll have me, so I don't really Yeah, that's mean. true. I get what you mean. That's funny. If this is bald. an because ex- we're doing this right after Halloween, too. It's kind of fun. He kind of looks like Ryan Dunn a little bit. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he kind of, his character is a little bit kind of like him. Yeah. I would talk about, because we do that Famous Dead series, I would talk about Ryan Dunn just for fun because he's such a fun, good person and just got too involved with fun shit, essentially. It's like That's essentially what happened. He's like, I love driving fast cars and being drunk. And it's just like the two combinations yeah. met each other. And, it's like the worst combination. Because then it destroyed Bam and stuff like that. But I love that type of stuff too. I, I love the idea of them renting an RV and like driving across country together and like having fun i love rvs man yeah you'll see throughout this as well like you know they're having drinks and obviously they're trying to shoot a a documentary or whatever but you can tell like they're also having fun like it's not just a strict we're shooting a movie this would be fun fun. i would love to do this is even me and anton rent an rv for like a week and then go around a haunted attractions like even around a like not too far but a certain like a certain area yeah and just go around and drive around would be so much fun. Because essentially, we put all our money together. It wouldn't be that expensive. 
Like that's fun. They have like for all the audio listeners um, that maybe just not watching the movie and interested in the commentaries. Like they have like a little map thing on like an iPad. <laughs> this would be fun. I would love, and I've always loved to want to make a a movie. I know, right? And it's expensive, obviously, but if for some reason we build enough stuff up and the fans really want it and we get a GoFundMe, there is a possibility that like when we're 35, 40, that we can end up shooting some sort of like crazy, even half an hour, hour and a half film. Uh, it's happening more and more now as well. Yeah, I know. Stuff like that. And I, um... I really do think that with our combined minds, we could create some sort of fucked up story. Also, so the guy who's who's doing a lot of the camera work here, Bobby, yeah. he wrote the movie, came up with the idea, uh, I think co-produced it, directed it, and he's one of the lead <laughs> characters as well. That's fucking cool. If you have the time and money, you can create anything. Like if you're if you're if you're creative as a person. Mm -hmm. If I just had the time and money and I was just like rich and my parents are rich or something like that, some some scenario like that where I lived in that existence of like I just had wealth and they were like, you can kind of do what you want. Like a lot of these people in Beverly Hills and, you know, these kids that grew up rich, I would just – I would sit down and be writing like oh, tons of scripts and movies and, and figure out how to do screenplays properly and stuff, which I do want to learn how to write a screenplay play properly. You know what's cool that I have? Um, I'll have it out. It's like in under my bed or in storage. I have uh, the script for Scream. It's oh, a replica, nice. but it's pretty cool. So you can see how they break down the screenwriting. I, I that was something that I was kind of got into for a while. I bought um William Castle, his uh, his daughter, I think, and a few other people. They put together mm -hmm. his script for the original House on Haunted Hill into like a That's book, cool. and they had it with all the the actual notes from William Castle himself on the script. He would make notes and he would change pieces oh, of dialogue. Oh, that's really and, cool. Yeah, it was cool to see. It's funny reading the script because it's like kind of different from the film yeah. and stuff like that too. Yeah. And you can like see the little notes and stuff that they may add and stuff. It's kind of cool actually. I Man, I'm sad Halloween's over, man. It's like I, 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 every day is Halloween to us, but like I love that shit. I didn't do much this Halloween, but I'd like to... Like this looks fun. I would love to do this. Uh, it would be so with cool. all of us. Even with Billy, would be fucking so fun to see his reaction because he doesn't normally go to stuff like this. Is that little girl following them? The one in the fucking doll mask? Because you kind of see her. Oh fuck. Yeah, she. Like later on, you kind of see how she's part of the whole thing, but that's like the, I guess the lead into. I think the whole idea is like, you know, they're in search of this thing, but little do they realize that what they're looking for is already kind of watching them. That's crazy. This looks so much fun, man. I just want to do this with you and Anton and Billy. It would be so fun. My brother, my brother's like, I would definitely come and do some of these haunting recordings with you. And I was like, the thing is, we could also get Trenton to film it because he can still make commentary from behind the camera. But technically, we can get him to film us do this stuff too because we need someone to film it if we go through attractions or do certain activities where we need a camera guy. My brother will do it. <laughs> I love the idea of being just a scared shitless too. Yeah, You've been I'm to like... the Frankenstein one, right, in Niagara? Yeah, 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 yeah. We got to do that because Anton's so close to the border. Like, and I'm not far from Niagara at all. I have family there and shit like that. We could easily do like even just the haunts on Clifton Hill because that one I remember going the first time. There's like hairy arms and like shit hanging from the ceilings. And the the first time I ever done that, I think we took a trip from um from New York up to Niagara for my birthday, and uh, I shit. My pants. <laughs> Going through that. What? When's your birthday? In April. Oh, sick. What the fucking try to do? Even do something fun online for your birthday. 
don't know what it is about about haunted attractions that like obviously there's the the whole aspect of being scared and all but there's something about yeah. like the the creativity oh. and like the the little storylines they build that's sick yeah i know because they have like a lot of them have a story with inside of the the haunts certain haunts like they the ones i went through they had like the area 51 and they yeah. have like a serial killer type house like a manor an old manor and this is sick i love the like showing you walking you through like the haunts and stuff like that it's fun I would love to do. Uh, oh shit! There she is. I would love to design one. If I had, if someone yeah. wanted to pay me money, yeah. I would love to sit there and like Same construct as. it in my mind. That um, when I was at that pharmaphobia thing a few weeks ago, the chick yeah. they had at the front gate was that mask. She was dressed up like that. Really? I don't even know if they realized it was from this movie or like they just bought something that they thought looked creepy. Cause straight away I yeah. was like, I was there with my my girl like, and I'm I'm doing that thing again. I'm going off, and I'm like, that's the chick from House of October Bills. <laughs> she's this and this this haunt and this part of the story, and she's just like, yeah, okay, I, I don't really, I don't care. I do that same thing with tons of stuff, even like a lot of times with conspiracies. I'm yeah, like, yeah. this is connected to this and this, and like I was like, this is why this is happening, or this is why they drip fed this and this. How are you? Yeah. I want to sign up. Uh, the Fear Farm place is not close. That's pretty close to me. Like maybe forty-five minutes, forty minutes, half. Probably like forty minutes. And they ask, like, "Oh, sign up to be an actor next year." And you something can do I always weekends. wanted to do. Yeah. Just for the experience. I know you'd have to like even like if I can just do like the Saturday shift, you know what I mean even the Friday night or Saturday sh even the Friday night shift if I can just do that for like the four or five weeks they do it I would. So many people. Like th this shit is like big money, and 100%. I think pla yeah places are starting to realize that now even more and more. The See cloud that masks are creepy. Yeah, and those dudes are pissed off now because they got up on the. Oh yeah. The roof. Take your hoodie off. <laughs> as soon as I hear that accent, I'd be like, "Oh shit." Yeah, that guy fucks his cousin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm liking this so far. It's like, uh, I like that it's, you know, they're going around and the attractions are showing it and it reminds you of like shit that we would do. Like I would do this. Like I do think that we should eventually do, uh, go to Niagara all together. All like, we'll all rent the same. Like, because if we all pitch for one hotel room that mm -hmm. has like three beds or whatever, we can just fucking chill, drink, go around the attractions on Clifton Hill and we can film some of it. We can ask them, be like, oh, we're doing a podcast. Can we, or are we able to film this? Um, Cause they let the guy from 360 attractions do it. So I feel like if we are like, yeah, we can even, can we tip you guys? Like we can try to do stuff like that. Because screamers, I thought like, even to tell the story, cause I've told the story a little bit before, but like my cousin worked at screamers in Niagara downtown. And he said that he would be like, he's seen people throw, like he's got thrown up on, he's had people punch him in the face. Um, like chicks would constantly like throw up on the, in the attraction. Then he had to clean it up. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that fuck? Cause that's the one where it's actual people. Screamers actually have people that scare the shit out of you. The Frankenstein one is more of like electronics yeah. and stuff yeah. popping out. Which I want to do all of this because I don't like screamers because I don't like guys real people. But my cousin and one of my buddies both work there, and it was funny. We were walking up the one day, and we're like going like oh walking down on Clifton Hill with my cousin, and then he was like this guy kept fucking with us out front, like he was wearing this like Grim Reaper costume, like it's pretty scary. And he kept fucking with us, and then my cousin Sebastian's like, "Is that uh is that Mike?" And I was like, no. I was like, and he's like, no, it's fucking Mike. I can see his boots. And he's like, got like the boots he always wears on. He's like, try to fuck with us. I was like, oh, there you are. And he like put it, he came up really close to my face with his mask and was like, hello, Thomas. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I, I love that as a job, though. That'd be so much fun. Oh, I know. You, he, my cousin said you see a lot of shit, like people just wasted chicks and like people throwing up and 
all sorts of shit. He got punched in the face at least like twice. So this is the point of this story where I would shit yeah. my pants. So they're out just taking a piss or something? No, I think he heard some weird shit. And he was like, yeah, he goes out and Holy ends up fuck. being the other dude. Oh, my God. One thing I like about this as well, so that, that guy there that just scared him, that's Bobby, who basically created the whole thing. Uh, super creative guy. But one thing I like about this is, obviously within the context of like it being a movie, a, most of the reactions and dialogue is quite realistic. Yeah, didn't you not, did you not talk to somebody from this film or no? Did, I thought that, you did. That, yeah, it's that guy, Bobby. Um I had him That's on so cool. the podcast twice and he uh I actually have the posters from both movies signed. He sent them to me for Christmas last year. Um and he wrote a kids book with the other guy in this movie, the short brown haired guy, Zach. They wrote a kids book um last year and he sent me uh a copy of it before it came out signed for my kid. Um That's so cool. Super nice guy. I'm actually gonna have him on, on the show again soon. He has some Really? New movies to announce and things coming out. Um, awesome. But yeah, just... Uh, and then to hear that uh, the whole idea of this came from the fact that him and some of his friends were huge fans of Haunts. Like, it wasn't just like they sat there and went, you know what, this might be a good cash grab. Like, we'll just use this because other people are doing it. He was like, no, we've done it because we already loved all that stuff. Yeah, and that's why I feel like I, especially like me and I think us uh, together could write such I think like a good serial killer story because that's the shit that I'm interested by. I like serial killers fascinate me, and it, to you essentially to create one out of some sort of mythos would be I think fairly interesting, and I feel like we easily could of like build up somebody's character, even a slasher film sort of killer. And I, I think I brought this up a couple of weeks ago as well about that Cropsy documentary. One thing I loved about that was they we took... We talk an, about that. Yeah, one thing I loved about that, though, was they took, like, an actual story and then kind of molded it into, like, this weird, like, documentary, mockumentary, horror movie kind of thing. They created, like, I've their own pieces, pieces of, of it. Yeah, I've seen bits and pieces of it. I don't think I've seen the full thing, though. Which could, like, that's why me and Aaron have said that, you know, we'll probably do this forever. I'll be six years old sitting here watching horror movies. But, like, is that we won't ever run out, though. There's so many things mm -hmm. to watch and to discuss because we are big fans of this. And also, also even for some of the Patreon stuff, uh, for the Hoseheads commentary that we do on the Patreon, we can do movies like Wayne's World and shit like that where it's just like fun ass movies to watch and then we have like reviews too which i want to review certain like fun comedy movies and shit like i think it'd be fun to um even watch an austin powers or two together yeah, that's literally then, what i was just thinking do of. a review i do a review on it would be fun as fuck to be like why he developed it get like details of the story of why mike myers came up with all this stuff that dude is so Ryan Dunn. I know. Even his voice kind of like sounds, mm -hmm. it's like kind of like him. Absolutely not. How long though? Because five thousand dollars to go in a snake pit. Um, mm. it just depends on how long. How long do I have to do it? Five minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes? I can do five for five thousand. So you, you mentioned earlier um about the guy pulling up the iPad and it had like the map yeah. with the different things marked on it. So here's here's a a funny little tidbit about a year ago. Um, Bobby and Zach, who's the guy who actually had that iPad in his hand, they uh, launched their own um, haunted attraction directory website, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's called Haunt Society, and it's billed as the world's most comprehensive haunted house directory. The directory allows you to find haunted attractions near you, either through searching by state or via zip code. 
Once you enter the zip code, a handy map will be automatically pulled up to pinpoints all of the haunted attractions you can find in your area and all the information about them. So That's sick. Yeah, I just pulled this thing up, dude, right? And I'm just looking at the map of the States and there is literally hundreds and hundreds of markers on the map. Is it all, is it, but it's only for around Halloween, isn't it? Or is it all, is there some there all year? Yeah, well, there's year round ones, like, and it'll tell you, like, once That's you click cool. on one. I just clicked on a, a random one here, Trilvania Haunted House in Texas. And then, like, you can view the profile. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, Texas probably up... has some fucked up haunted houses, man. Man, this is, Be like... Real and fake. <laughs> this is deep. It gives you, like, all their stuff. Then it has, like, um, it tells you about what merchandise they have, what houses they've had in the past, videos, um, a map to get their... All the contact information, ticket information, social that's fucking media. That's awesome. I'm so down to go to Niagara and do this shit, man. Because that's the easiest one to do, like, first. How do I... <laughs> Motel 6. And we'll definitely have to... I would love to uh, all go camping... And just tell some scary ass stories and shit like that. And like we could film that. Like and the thing for all the people that are fans of this, like there's tons of content that we can do for Patreon, um, for the YouTube pages and stuff like that that will probably be coming, especially once we get together, where we can just film our time uh, essentially together because we're all characters. And uh I like the idea of like having a fire telling some scary ass stories mm -hmm. and shit like that. <laughs> He's spitting some rhymes. I don't even ever really remember that guy in the story, to be honest with you. <laughs> really? Because obviously people start getting murdered at some point, right? I'm assuming. <laughs> Who's that's that a, guy? That's a weird interaction. Yeah. Yeah, weird. I I mean that there's no rules for Hicks. Like, what are you gonna do? There's five of us. <laughs> it, it's a. It, there's some of the dialogue in this as well. It's really hard to like commentate over it because it kind of builds the tension. You're like, what's going on? It's fucking weird. Is this guy part of this or is this like? Enjoy and, my fire. It's just like we just came out here because we saw this. And as, as the movie moves along, y you kind of um, you kind of find yourself trying to draw the lines between like, is this a haunt now, or are these part of this other thing that's going on, or oh yeah, or what's happening? Oh, paintball! That's fucking sick. I think this one, they, you, you stay on the back of the thing, but I've actually seen videos of ones where they let you out and, like, you've got your team of, like, three or four and you have to try and survive and get to, like, the waypoint at the other side of the... That's fucking awesome. Paintball's fucking hurt, though. <laughs> yeah, that must suck for the guys acting as the zombies in this. Yeah, I know. Just there all night getting absolutely... <laughs> That's fun as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's so fun. For the people maybe that are not watching, they're like, there's zombies and then they get paintball guns and they get to shoot the zombies. That's fucking so fun. I would take one and be like, ow, I'm falling down. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> the power of Christ compels you. That's so fun. I didn't know they did shit like that. That's fucking sick. Yeah, it is, right? It's 
creepy ass clown watching them. Oh, there's a little girl again. Weird. That would be weird, though, wouldn't it? And, like, that would be kind of the reaction. Some people would probably be going, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, who cares? Yeah. I'd be like, what are you doing here? Oh, this is fucking freaky. Weird. Like, can we take you home to your parents? <laughs> that mask is so weird. It's, yeah, because it almost looks like it's stuck on the face. Mm hmm. No, we should do a commentary on House of Wax. Oh, what the fuck? I don't like that. Uh, at this point, I'd probably have to punch her in the head and throw her out the door. Yeah, I don't like this. Look at these weird fucking sounds. I guess, though, right, if you're doing what they're doing, you're probably thinking to yourself, like, is this some, like, weird fucking, like, hick kid who's, like, not being looked after or some shit? Yeah, I know. Like some sort of inbred kid. Yeah, like that's like just puts like on left. a mask because she's actually really deformed underneath. I've always liked the feeling of being scared, knowing I'm not going to be actually hurt. Right, that's the whole yeah. idea. Yeah, is that it's it builds up fear, and you have like the fear rece uh, what's that called the receptors or ever in your brain, but you know that you're not actually going to get murdered. But the idea of actually going to a haunt to and actually getting murdered is fucked. Like the McCamey Manor stuff, I do want to talk about because that sounds fucking crazy. That dude like, is so. Oh my God. Like, I don't remember because I was I was so drunk. But did I tell the story about the little interaction that I had with him? You kind of said that you were talking to him, like that you so, talked to him like once or twice or. So weird, right? I. I had this idea and I don't know, like it sounds now like I'm just stealing the idea from this movie, but I had this thing in my head where I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to document, I'm going to bring someone with me and I'm going to document my travel from Ireland to Tennessee to do this haunt. And I'm going to like film as much as I possibly can. And then like, you know, have, I guess, interviews with me throughout the course of the whole thing. And I started to ask around a lot of people. There's a, there's a movie out there called Haunters, the Art of the Scare. Um, and this guy basically went around to all these different haunts and interviewed the people like so people that do home haunts, people that scaled up to get like their own building and to do it year round and shit like that. And that's a lot cool. of behind the scenes stuff. And that that's where I first discovered Russ McCamey. This guy done like I've a deep heard of dive it before on him. Said it, and I think I saw it on like a doc. I don't think it was the same yeah. doc. It might have been the same doc. But that he, yeah, he's been on a few different things. And so I started, uh, I started fun. to, I suppose, get into the circles of some of these people who may have known him or interviewed him or, you know, worked with him or for him. And yeah. I started to ask questions about, like, you know, how do I get in touch with him? What's because, like, apparently there's like 20,000 people on the wait list to do this shit. Now, some people say that's 20, fake. 20,000? Some people say that's fake. He just makes that up. But then other people say that they've been told, like, it's going to be five or six years before they'll get to do it. Uh, he doesn't charge yeah, now that any time, money. Yeah, that time I'm like, I'm, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> he he doesn't charge any money, so you don't pay for it. All he wants you to do is, he asks that you buy, or bring, um, you know, like big bags of dog food. And he donates what? those to like a local like dog shelter pound thing. That's all he asks for. That sounds weird. So I can't help. What I did? You ever smoke cigarettes? Mm -hmm. 
When I see someone smoke a cigarette, there's a part of my brain that's like, that looks nice. And then if oh, I yeah. did, I'd be like, <clears throat> every time, every time I see it, I'm like, oh my God, that looks so tasty. And then it's not really when you this do it. You're hell. Like, yeah. Every um, time I see someone a, smoke though, I think that. I know. I do. I sometimes I like the smell of it. It sounds fucked because I smoked for like 15 years or something like that. 13 years. Um, I want to tell you Manor and for like the people that may don't know, it's like crazy. The guy like tortures you. It sounds nuts. And the fight that I told Billy about it, but it's like 20 grand, I'd do it. I'm like, of course. Because Billy would just fucking push himself. He doesn't give a shit. It's money. Right? I, so, like, so like I, this. the more I was like guy. digging into this dude and trying to find out about him, one night at like 4 a.m., I wake up to a notification on my phone. I'm like, what the fuck? Is, who, who's emailing me at 4 a.m.? And I look at it and he goes, uh, in, in the... Um, in the subject line, I think it says like, uh, if you're looking for me, you know what to do. And then in the body that, of the email, fucked. it just said, call me and then a phone number. And I was like, what the fuck? And I fell back asleep or whatever. And it was only the next day when I got up, I was like, oh yeah, that email weird. I was like, who the fuck was that from? And it was him. That's so it, crazy. It was Russ. He's McCann, like, I heard so. you're looking for me, boy. And, but when I started to say this, then people were like, yeah, but that's part of like, what this McCamey Manor thing is. He does all this like um you have to be pre screened and stuff and they do Skype interviews oh, with you and he has fun. to meet you in person. And then there's a ninety yeah. page waiver, I think, that you have to read with him and then you sign all this shit and whatever. But a lot of people seem to reckon it's part of like the he's fucking with you like weeks before you actually even do the thing. That sounds crazy. Yeah, he's uh, like I don't know, there's all this shit like, you know, he was in the military and there's people like, you know, there's shit about MK Ultra and hypnosis. Apparently he How do I know he even has this money if he doesn't charge for it? That's the weird thing. This you is know, the thing, because a lot of people are like, it's a scam, he's sick in the head. Cause he had to move. Jesus. I think originally he was in like San Diego or somewhere and he got so much shit that he moved somewhere else in California. And we'll the same thing happened. We'll have to do like happened. a deep dive into that and really discuss it because he's probably in the back room watching the tapes jerking off. But like, I love making people scared. <laughs> yeah, it's it's some of it's weird. Like he's like putting pliers in people's mouths and like pretending to take their teeth out and shit. I gotta say, some of the actors that do the haunts are fucking so good. Yep. You like? Did you like Haunt on Shutter? Yeah, that shit was good. I actually yep. liked that a lot. Yep. That's why it's funny how like Aaron was laughing at me and, and so I loved Smile and Anton didn't like it and it's just funny because we have very different opinions on stuff so you hear us like go back and forth and it was I was laughing at that I told Chelsea that Aaron's like you guys gotta keep going with this I don't know if it's a bit it sounds like a bit but it's just like not but me and Anton is like because we have such we're such good friends that we just like be like no that's he's like it's shit I'm like no it's fucking good shut the fuck up. <laughs> so fucking funny i was doing so much laughing at that it was like crazy i love that i thought smile was fucking trippy i thought it was different chelsea yeah. did not like the big lady like the Marilyn manson looking lady when she like, walked looking. through the thing the door and then she like looks right at like the camera it's fucking scary yeah i really I liked it that. i didn't think there was too much cgi i didn't even notice that the cat was cgi i didn't i didn't even notice any of that shit and, and you know what as well i'm really glad that um because it got so much hype around it that they actually brought it to to the theaters because that was originally yeah, I, supposed to be like a streaming release i thought so too we and we were like deciding what to watch i was like let's go see this and the whole theater was empty we had to buy ourselves we like talked laughed like it was sick man which i'm excited to even do that like if you ever come down for like a weekend or a week or whatever like mm -hmm. that it's like go see a fucking scary movie together like that'd be so much fun I have drive uh, drive-ins all around me too. There's one that's oh, like only nice. like 40 minutes away. I've um, never been to one. And they play horror one. movies. Uh, I went to one when I was like a kid, uh, but I keep wanting to go back. This fucking looks scary as fuck. But we should do that. Let's go to a fucking drive-in, do the double feature. They do horror movies every October. We got to do that. Even next year, come down. We'll fucking do that shit. I... <sighs> I don't know why as well. Sometimes I find these kind of attractions scarier than something like a universal. Yeah, because it's like real people and shit. Oh, fuck. yeah. And it just seems kind of more real. I'm like, is this like, is there a potential here that like these people are fucking psychotic? Because even the actors, how they get so into it, you're like, are you doing this on purpose? Yeah. And I mean, like you're out in the middle of fucking nowhere, probably on some farm. 
That one looks fun. Oh, fuck. This one looks fucking frightening. I know, yeah. Like, there's so many good ones even I've been to. Like, the, the little amount that I've been to haunted attractions, some of them are fucking creepy. And, like, you're like, oh, shit, that lady over there. You don't notice people sometimes and, like, yep. in a corner just standing there. Oh, that monkey. That's why I've always been, like, it's something I would love to do. I would love to put one of these together. Yeah, me too. And to be honest, we the sky's the limit. We're still young. You don't know what can come in the future. We can maybe, like, if, if, if we, you know, the show gets picked up a lot and people are really interested by the stuff, you could have, we could have any people shutting us out and be like, yeah, we'd like to work with you on something. I would be, you got to put it out in the universe and you never know what happens. I mean, the amount of people that I've seen, like content creators that have gone on to do things like, uh, there's a, a YouTube um, channel. I can't remember their fucking name off the top of my oh, head. Oh, fuck. But they don't like, they're, what the fuck? They're doing their own, um, like fan is film that version of it's yeah. fresh. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're doing like their own fan film, uh, a Nightmare on Elm Street one, and like it got, they put it on Kickstarter and it got backed for like eighty grand or some shit. That's so cool. Like that's why, we, and we're talking about for all the fans out there too. Like we're talking about doing like commentaries on fan films because we see them on YouTube. Like and there's mm -hmm. a, a Halloween one that looks fairly good. And it's got like tons of views, like almost like a like hundreds of thousands of views. Um, I and even you said the what's that? Uh, I never hike alone. Yep. Very that good. looks good. And I've never seen it. So there's stuff like that which would be semi fun to do is like to commentate on some of these fan films. There's a, the there's another guy, um, I don't know if you've seen him or heard of him on YouTube, called um, yeah. Chris Stuckman. He does all movie reviews on YouTube. He's been going for years, um, and he always wanted to make his own horror movie, <laughs> and he's a big yeah. fan of uh, like found footage and that kind of like Blair Witch style thing. Yeah. And... Uh, He's like pushing for years now. Obviously, he's got quite a good following now, but he's been doing this shit like probably over a decade. And uh, he decided to put it up on Kickstarter or Indiegogo or one of those things. And he ended up like this thing went, went viral. And like, I think he ended up ended up with, like two point something million. That's crazy. There is the there is the possibility out there. Hopefully, the world doesn't come to an end as it seems like it is. But there is a possibility to fucking do some of these fun things that we all um, essentially want to do. Like I've I've wanted like I wanted to be a director since I was like mm. ten years old. So yep. And I, it makes me excited that you're so into it, and we kind of sparked each other's uh, imagination back. And the thing is, there's so much stuff that we can work on, even all three, four of us. Because Billy will be down to do whatever. Like, if he's like, oh, we want to do this, go to come to a haunt with us. He'll, like, probably take it off and come because he's starting to realize how much fun all of this stuff is. And we've been doing it for years, though. But now that Anton and all of us are included, like, doing even, like, the Halloween special was some of the funniest shit we've ever done. People were, like, we're saying, like, it's so funny, man. Like, that shit killed. And uh, there's so many things going forward that we can do, even like really fun live specials, like the Christmas one. Let's get fucking weird on that one and show some crazy shit. Because that the one last year that we did, uh, because obviously we're leading up like time this even comes out, will be kind of closer, I think, to Christmas and stuff. And like we were showing some weird Christmas cards and shit. Like, like there's some weird shit out there to do with Christmas, yeah, man. Yeah. A haunted Christmas attraction would be fucking fun. And there's like actually like a quite a lot of them stop. out there. Really? Yeah. Because I know that in um um <laughs> that place that uh isn't it what what's the place that's the Krampus knock? Um, Is that Germany? No, that's the Czech Republic. Uh, and they do Krampus knock. Uh -huh. That's so crazy! I can't. We're talking about that for the Christmas special. I can't wait for that shit. Because because my my girlfriend is is. Uh, is from the Czech Republic, and she, uh, she's always Not like, "Oh, tits. some year we have to go back and like we'll do all that." And I'm like, "Yeah, cool, sounds good to me." Czech Republic's that supposed to be amazing as well. Yeah, that chick's tits look like a sex doll's tits. Like they look yeah, like so fake, freakish looking. Yeah, they look so fake. Like almost like where it's like too perfect looking. Yeah, you see, I'm like, not. That's I'm, not real. Yeah, I'm not really into that one. It's like 
you've tried no. so hard to make them perfect they don't even look real yeah it's weird <laughs> to be honest this is their scene to get all the tit seating because it's a horror movie the guy's like i just want to you know what? i got one one part of the film i want to do we're going to go to a strip club and we're going to have people who have the boobs on our head and we're just going to do it because it's fun so this might be maybe a little bit controversial of me to say as well as a as a dude but i don't really think i'd be that crazy into like what they were just doing there where it's all like oh yeah let's play like pool with topless chicks and stuff it's like if i was that into a chick like i just want to have sex with her i don't like all this other stuff. yeah i feel like it's kind of yeah i like a lot of strip like even like thinking about a strip club you're just sitting there and having some chick like rind on you you can't do anything yeah so you right? just get to sit but there you, and pay for that privilege and get blue balls all night see i don't understand that I knew this dude that I worked at a restaurant. Disgusting. Like I'd never been to the strip club. This in this shitty town, uh, city called Brantford. It's like it's like Toronto's little <laughs> handicap cousin. Like it's like a bad city. And um, I knew this dude. He would just pay this chick like sixty bucks to blow him at this strip club. And it's just like, ew, man. I, he wasn't my friend. He was just a dude that worked at this restaurant or like was like that. They kind of worked there part time, and I was like, "What the fuck, man!" I've never paid, and I never will pay. I'll just say that. Yeah, and you know what it is, though. It's not even for me. Like, I'm not trying to be one of those people. Like, oh, I I do think I am above that anyway. But like, it's not even like I'm trying <laughs> to like shame anybody or anything. But it's just like, no, me I just don't understand really like the the whole allure of that. Like, even like I said there a second ago. You know, they're having so much fun and he's like drinking a beer off her tits and stuff. And I'm like, really, is it that much fun? I know because you're just, yeah, I don't think it's like even for my, uh, when we do my bachelor party, um, I just want to get a boat, a houseboat and like just nice. like just sit on the water and drink during like some nice weather. Like that's what I want to do. It's just funny that like that's the thing that they think they need to do for a lot of those things. So it's like we gotta go see tits because you're getting married, and it's just like, do we though? So he's trying to get like flirt with that chick in the thing Is she a and stripper? do like the. <laughs> no, she works she... in the haunt or something, and like haunted attraction. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sure. I don't know. He like got her on the ground or something, and he was like, "Oh, you have a hot thong." <laughs> and while that was all going on, the other dude now has Zach has got a bit of information about this other haunt that those Thanks. two guys, yeah, those two guys told him we paid to do this haunt. It's crazy. It's like nothing like you've ever seen. Uh, it's something like the blue skull or the blue skeleton is the name of it. So now they're trying to find it. So yeah, the the name ends up being the blue skeleton. Louisiana. So apparently this thing changes every year. It goes from place to place. Weird. Like hostel or some shit. Like isn't that hostel like they, they move kind I, of like there's locations? Man, that bull got me fucking ripped and I'm like this fucking freaky ass clown. I'm talking to you, biggin. <laughs> I'd be like, all right, buddy, back up. <laughs> Why does this guy care who they're recording? Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's like. Are you security? And, yeah, yeah. And it seems like that in a lot of these haunts they go to, they don't like that. They don't like anybody to like overstep. Yeah, I know. Um, I When I went to uh, Niagara Falls, one of the haunts, I uh, one of the people that were dressed up, I tapped them on the shoulder. Like, uh, ha, I tapped you on this side, and I went to the other side. And he started talking to, like, the security, and I, like, walked away. I was like, what the fuck, man? I tapped you on the shoulder, and you're supposed to scare us? And he was probably some kid, like, he tapped me. <laughs> okay, so that's the... I don't normally hit bars. 
bogs, man, and I'm fucking ripped. <laughs> just like yeah do you own any bongs man i have like i have we were thinking about bringing some out in storage i have like five in storage i think i, I did at one point and then the last time i moved i don't know how it happens every time i move but i'm like Smash hey where up. no but i'm just like hey where is that thing <laughs> or where's that box of stuff i had and it just seems to vanish someone just keeps throwing it out but like yeah so i don't know whether it's like weed. yeah someone's like looking at it going yeah that can go in the bin that's fucking funny. So you have to get it still, like from like a shady guy, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is like you go it's so fucking, it's so pathetic, so weird. Because so we can get pathetic. it offline. It's, like, you know what companies. the weirdest part is, though, right? Like there is very, very, very few people like in my ecosystem that do not smoke, and so it's yeah. just like at, at this point for me, it's like why why don't we just legalize this thing and just cut out all that bullshit? I know. Just have shops, right? Because essentially you could, if you want, I guess you couldn't. Can you travel to like somewhere that has it legally and then bring it over like your little borders? Or the, the, There is guys that do it, but if you get caught, like it's like a big thing. Like sometimes guys go to like places like Spain and shit. It's funny just because Canada's been legal. It's the one thing Justin Trudeau did to get <laughs> votes. That was like it. The one thing good that he did. And then, uh, it, but who knows? It's regulated. Who knows what they're spraying on it? But it's funny how the rest of the world hasn't really caught up. Like a lot yeah. of America does. Like and there's just certain states that don't. And it's kind of weird. So I don't know if you've noticed this uh, about this scene, but none oh, of she, those. Somebody picked up a camera. Yeah, not, and it's none of the people who... Okay, I was thinking movie. that. So he picked up the somebody picked up the camera, and I was like creeping on this chick. I mean, I feel like if if I was that creep, like, wouldn't you want to do more than that? <sighs> He's just leading up to it, man. He's building up those blue balls. <laughs> oh look, what is it? Clint? Oh, oh no, it's a skeleton. Okay. I was like, I can't see who that is, really. <laughs> this wicked witch. Make it a wicked man witch. I was just going to say, is that not a dude's voice? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Do you know what's... Um what's really like underrated and not talked about in a fighter i don't know if you can hear like what? that background music or whatever you want to call it there yeah yeah I can how that it. yeah how that like suddenly makes like a you know archive footage infinitely scarier the, 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 yeah the slow tones Oh yeah, because they all kind of have that little underlying, like just kind of music. It's not enough, but it's it's just something enough to like build up tension. Because they can't have some sort of orchestra playing like they did during Barbarian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's just like dong dong. It's just like where's this coming from? <laughs> oh yeah, he finds the footage. That's fucking scary. <sighs> so at this point. If you were any of those people, what would you actually do? I don't know. I'd leave. Yeah. Just <laughs> just up like, and leave. I'm getting out of here. There's certain times, like we, when we watch Barbarian, I'm sorry, I'm giving you a small review of that, but like when they were like, when we kept just saying, like, don't go down there. Why know, do you yeah. keep going further? I would not. I'm sorry. I'd call the cops and be like, hey, somebody's down there. I don't know who is down there, but look at this thing. Like, this is fucked. I, yeah, I can't lie and say, right, I went to see that on my own as well. Um, oh, that's crazy, man. That was scary. I, I remember sitting there and I was like, and I've seen a lot of, you know, movies much like you and done a lot of creepy shit and been in a lot of weird situations and whatever, but yeah. there is no fucking way that I would have went down any of those tunnels or any no. of that. Like, I would have shit my pants at that first one. Not even alone. Like, like, I, like okay, not even with someone, but like, not alone. Like going when, down that tunnel, man. Oh, when you get to that first room shit. and there's like that weird, like disgusting bed and like the chain or whatever, I would have been like, right, yeah. that's if if I even got that far, I would be like, there's no fucking way. I'm gonna call the military. <sighs> I'm gonna call the navy. I know. <laughs> yeah, I I we should do a commentary on that. And actually, actually, I want to do a review. 
Mm -hmm. We should do a review on that film because I have some stuff to say. It's fucking a weird movie. So did they find something in their fridge, like some sort of like... I think it was supposed to be like a, a cow, yeah, like a cow's heart or something like that, or a sheep's. And they don't know why it's there, right? Yeah, and the the two main guys, Zach and Bobby, they're basically after saying like, don't tell any of the rest of them about that footage because everyone will leave and go home, or we won't get to make this documentary. Yeah. Oh fuck, man. Which which I suppose look seems like a legit reason because they're like, this is kind of their passion project. Yeah. So it's like... Okay, well, you'd so be like, we gotta do this. We've yeah. been doing this this whole time. Yeah. We're gonna back down now. I could picture them like being drunk and be like, until somebody dies, we're gonna keep on going. <laughs> this, is like... this is the part now I think where things start to take a little bit of a turn, where they're getting directions to go and oh, look for this thing and... <laughs> I think some of the others in the group are like, yeah, but why are we doing this? Because it seems a bit weird. And he's like, well, you said you didn't want to do like the shitty Mickey Mouse attractions anymore. This place is fucking weird. Is that the music? Yeah, no, dude, I, I took my out. headphone. I, that yeah, was like... I took the headphone off because I was like, who's singing in my house? That's what I just thought. I was like, where did Chelsea music did Chelsea just turn on? Because it's like background. They did it. That's fucking weird. This is where now I'd probably be thinking about dipping. Yeah, this looks sketchy. And everyone in their costumes and shit. Like, oh my. Yeah, because at this point now, like, it's not out of the realm of possibility that these could be just some weird, like, fucking hick inbred, like, enjoy raping or murdering people. That shit's weird, man. That The people in the background dancing with this, like, weird look on their face, like, their eyes wide open. Because it seems like it's a setup, like, that all these people are, like, planted there for that reason. Because realistically, like, why would you still be in character? Everyone seems to be in the from the attraction drinking at a bar. Which is also strange. There's only people dressed up. But then here's the other aspect of it. And I think is what they're thinking of is, is this part of the attraction? Oh my God. That fucking guy would make me up. Like I get the fuck out of here. Like even with all five of my friends, I'd be like, I don't like this. This is giving me bad energy. I, I wish people could see this because there's something really unsettling about the way he's dancing in that costume yeah and the mask is unsettling the way he's dancing is like a drunk oh man that's fucking scary that's a sick mask though oh my fucking god i do not like this part i'm like i'll get the fuck out of here man (laughs) just jesus and you see, I, I don't know if they're still torn between, like, is this part of this? this show or is this, like, some other freaky shit? Hmm. Weird. Yeah, I don't like this. Oh, look. City boys forgot their camera. <laughs> I wouldn't even, like, I would have taken it with me and just, like, be like, okay, yeah. it's not on. Uh, yeah, I see that shit. That's, that's the cool. shit that, like, creeps me out. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. That shit happens more often, I think, than people even understand. Yeah, which is fucked. Yeah. That's why, hey, women out there, make sure you have <laughs> keys in your hands. I can't help but laugh at that that little bit of dialogue. What did there. he say? He said, uh, "I hear you're looking for Mr. Giggles. I've got the <laughs> I've got Mr. Giggles right here for you." <laughs> oh, that's fucking funny. Oh, I can't really miss that shit. <laughs> See, that would make me like imagine like that was you know Chelsea or something like that. God forbid, like how uncomfortable yeah. and how how pissed off, freaked out, yeah. everything that everybody in that situation would be. 
and like I can't do anything because I don't also want to get murdered. But yeah, they so have it's a like shotgun, yeah, you have this like weird fucking like I want to kill everybody here, but I also can't because I'm in a bar full of I fucking inbred psychopaths. Yeah, that's fucked. <laughs> I'm gonna call my dick Mr. Giggles. <laughs> Fiddlestick and Mr. Giggles. <laughs> Throw it over to our Dahmer episode. Yeah, so now they're all I feel like this shit's leading argue. up to... Oh, fuck. Because he's still all about, like, it's in Louisiana, that's where we're going. And kind of being like, oh, it's part of the whole thing. And then they're like, yeah, but they posted a video of us asleep in the RV online. Yeah. Oh, that's and fucking they tried, scary. And they tried to rape the chick or whatever. I got Mr. Giggles in my pants. What the fuck? Also, being in an RV is fucking scary. Yeah, freaky. Because it's just like you're surrounded on all sides. It makes me think of uh, the fucking Hills Have Eyes. One mm-hmm. of my favorite. Both oh, the first one and so, the remake. So, so good, fucking man. good. My God. Okay, I could watch but Hills them Have Eyes too, too rapey for me. I could watch those so, movies so many times, oh, though. God. The second one's fucked, dude. It it's gets so very inbred, rapey, like, oh, fuck. That shit's so scary. But I, I watched the first one, I think, in theaters, and when the dad gets lit on fire, I was like, holy fuck. His screams like, really? are like, they really, like, I don't know what it sounds like when someone's been burned alive at a stake, but. Yeah, oh, it's fucked. I feel like that they really pulled that one off. The remake did it better than the original. Yeah, like, I think I, so. And I love, I love Wes Craven, but, like, it's. Holy fuck. Oh my god, I would not like this. Dude, I swear oh. to god, I would start that engine so fast oh. and just start mowing people down. Man, this is good going in the fucking Jesus. Going in this like without any I've never seen this. This is kind of fun. Oh man, I'd be so uncomfortable. Oh, they turned the lights off. Some on. sort of inanimate object, like a fucking van. It's, just a, it's not even a structure. It's like a fucking an object that drives around. I can't do the extreme stuff. It's not for me. Even for the money, I couldn't. Like, I just feel like I would just. There was it's something in me would break. My mind would break. Anton said he would have a heart attack. I yeah. You see, I I think I maybe come across like I would like to do it. I don't even know if it's so much that I would love to go to these places and be able to observe. But the only way that a lot of these yeah. will allow you to see is by actually doing it. So fucked up. That because I yeah, suppose that's part of their like it? Yeah, I suppose that's part of their mystique or whatever. But like I've tried so many times to like reach out to different haunts that do shit like that. And I'm like, is there any way to like go behind the scenes or like do interviews or anything? And they're like, Nope, you can come through the attraction, but you can't there's no recording that's or anything fucked, like that. Because when you're talking about the McCanny Manor stuff, like I've Jesus so he, yeah fuck. so here's my thought process on that is what's to stop him okay so let's say i fly from ireland and i'm in the middle of tennessee what's yeah, to I stop know. him when i'm there on my own or with one person what's to stop him fucking me in the ass when i'm buried underground yeah, out in the anything. middle of it? taking like, pictures like anything like, and, that, and that's what i'm saying that it's how it, if he's doing it for free what does he have to um gain from this other than some sort of like uh, pleasure in it it doesn't even have to be sexual it could be like his own like mind the way he, like uh, you you would need it to overpower people you Which know how, like dark sidious like like you know D- john Dahmer loved that guy just loved to overpower people with his power i'm just joking but that's like you know it's even that but but the, like i think you're on the same like <sighs> so weird what's this now so they found a pumpkin and it has a letter inside of it Oh my god, like fuck up. So Ryan Dunn, I don't think, is happy with any of this. He's like, <laughs> this is fucking retarded. I want to get the fuck out of here. It's crazy how much he looks like Ryan Dunn. And and like it's kind of like nuts, man. This guy ever hears that. You look like Ryan Dunn, it's strange. You know how you always have like there's people have do- uh I would like to talk about on the show Doppelgangers. Yeah, yeah. Like on Strange Bruce side. It's weird, man. When I was 12 years old, I looked the exact same as the dude from Hawthorne Heights, the lead singer. If you've ever heard of that band, yeah. I had the f- pictures of me and people, people thought it, people would tell me it when I was a kid, there was even my uh, buddy's younger brother. He's like, he looks so much like that guy from Hawthorne Heights. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. I've heard this. <laughs> oh, look, the blue skeletons on the wipers. 
Oh, scary. See, I'd be like, oh, cheap, cheap, fun masks, whatever. This doesn't seem that scary. <laughs> Oh, do they have to wear them? Oh, weird. See, and again, right, as as people who love this kind of stuff, I'm not saying I would be jumping for joy, but let's say this was our passion project that we wanted to make a movie about yeah. something like this or a documentary. Wouldn't there be part of, like, I suppose, your creative, passionate mind that's going, oh, no, we have to fucking, we have to go through with this. Like, this is so wild. This is going to be, like, the best documentary ever. I know because you would, it would drive you to do it because you'd be like, you have to keep pushing yourselves and in your head, you think nothing bad's going to happen. Like these are just attractions. Yeah. It's all part of like the game. Yeah. Yeah. Now they're all starting to argue. So like the two main guys are still all up for it. And then I think everybody else is kind of like, uh. <laughs> I'm not doing this shit. I would be at this point. I'm like, no, I'm done. Like, oh, I, I'm gonna go hang out with the stormtroopers. Is what this, I would this do. bit is weird. They're uh, like in Louisiana. One of those, like, I don't know what you call them. You know where they have like those? Have you ever been? I would. It seems crazy down there. Big uh, no. Uh, I went to to Jacksonville, Florida, and that was fucking wild. My mom like has a friend in Nashville, and she's been in Nashville. I like Nashville seems crazy too. Even like just like well, country. Jacksonville was party. like. Dude, I swear to God, like, I felt like I was in, like, a third world country. I was like, what the fuck? It's because of how, um, like, the amount of shit that the two boobs are happening and stuff like that. Because some of it seems like there's so many bad areas in the States if you travel deep enough. And I don't have to, like, it, there's stuff like that in Canada. But it's not, I feel like, as rampant in, like, it's yeah. more in the States of yeah. these broken down areas. Even that movie Smile oh. kind of shows it. Is that a you know what I mean? How, like, there? oh, yeah. Det no, like, Detroit, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, fucked. Like, so crazy, and I like that smile showed that. That shit's fucked up, man. What happens, like, we're like, everyone's living normal, then, like, a recession hits or something like that, and there's, like, no houses being sold at this area anymore. Nobody lives there. Broken down houses. New Orleans seems wild. On, like, Mardi Gras and shit, I couldn't even imagine. Yeah, Just, like, the, like the, even this here now. Costumes. The way like these are going around in this, uh, I don't know, there's something about this that kind of freaks me out. And they keep seeing like the blue skeleton thing in different places. That's scary. You know, and, and like there's so many people. Yeah. Is it, is it, is this a really clever, like creative marketing thing or are we all about to get chopped up? And the way they're moving the camera, it's just like it almost makes you like nauseous how they would feel of how many people are around you and stuff like that. The way he's like just like throwing the camera every which way, like you would if it was if you were just See, filming I don't think shit. I would do this like they're following the dude with the blue skeleton mask. No. Down an alleyway. I would not do that. No fucking way. So she in New Orleans, people get murdered all the time doing shit like this. Oh my god. And they, they're back. Holy fuck. Oh my god. I would fucking be like, help! Help! <laughs> oh my god, I don't like this at all. You know what it reminds me of? You know in like uh, A Clockwork Orange, which I'd love to talk about Stanley Kubrick one day, is when their old people have their hands on Alex mm -hmm. and it's just like, get the fuck away from me. Like, oh my, that shit's fucking scary. That That's a movie that like really frightened me as a kid. I watched it when I was like 14, man. All my friends, we all put it on. I watched that so young, way younger than I should have. Maybe even 13. That movie I had talked, man. And I was like, so don't many, talk about it. I had so many nightmares about being strapped to a chair and having... Oh, that's fucked. That shit in my really? eyes. That's crazy. We should talk about that film, man. Like, I watched that young. It influenced my mind. That shit is, like, nuts. I have the big poster behind me. It's up here. The fucking one where they're all walking. I have yeah, it on yeah. Blu-ray. Like, oh, that's a fucking movie that is crazy. But Stanley Kubrick knew some shit about some stuff. That's all I'm going to say. Because I want to talk about it one day. So, do they not know where Homeboy is? So they, they Homeboy's gone and they're driving around? 
Yeah, so he, he's gone missing, but I think they're still kind of half thinking, oh, this is like part of the thing. They've brought him to the to the area where the haunt is, and it's like all part of Ryan the Ryan Dunn does not look comfortable. Like, I don't know, at this point, you see, this is the hard part, right? Because if that was you that had gone missing, I don't know if I could sit there and go, oh, I'm going to bail. You're kind of like... I know, I well, agree, we have though, because I'd be like, i got to find this guy. He's like, okay, this is probably just a joke. But yeah, you or An- even Anton or Billy, like, if I had to look, for, I'd have to. Because I'd be like, man, I'd feel so fucking horrible. I'd be like, I'd have to, like, try to look for you guys at least. And then, hey, if I get yeah. murdered. That's why you need guns, man, sometimes. If you like, had, like, the- if you were like, while doing this around the States and you were someone who concealed and carried and you just had it in your RV... Shit like this happens, man. You can defend yourself. That's like this, yeah. Just... This is the part now where it's just kind, kind oh, of like, I don't wait, like wait. This either. is like taking a massive turn now. What's going on? I don't like buses because this doesn't even seem like fun anymore. No. And like, I, I think don't like this. I yeah, like, like I, I think everybody now has kind of got to the point where it's like, okay, this is not that fun. Yeah, this fucking freaks me out. Uh, is it though? What is real yeah. to you? <laughs> this is the thing. Like, it's like, oh. Uh... Yeah, like I don't need. It's a like, smart. It's a smart idea because it's to me. It's like almost like kind of like, um, ah, there's other films like this where it's like, but it's like a almost like a Leatherface kind of family, like hillbilly, even like mm-hmm. um, what's that one film, uh, Wrong Turn type of thing? Because if you just had picture with people like that, oh fuck, like. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Do, do you confront them? Do you, like, what, what? Like, is it like, okay, yeah, no, we're done. It's not. We... You know what? Okay. Holy fuck. I was going to say, I was like, Jesus. You know what they should do? They should just fly this guy to Bam, and then Bam can, like, pretend to hang out with him, and then Bam <laughs> might not be so, like, <laughs> sick in the head. You know what I mean? It's like it's just like we we'll just pretend, but like just give him a lot of drugs and be like, "Yo, it's Ryan Dunn. He came back that, from that the poor dead. fucker has really taken the turn, hasn't he?" I know. I used to love Bam, and I had his Same. posters all on my wall, dude. Same. I used to watch Evil of Bam all the time. Oh, it's fucking fucked. And I wanted. I held out for him to be, get better, and like it's just he and Brandon Novak is like doing like addiction counseling. And it's really good which is he's doing. so like, wild to see how they've literally gone to like, other ends of the spectrum. <laughs> I know, because he was bad at one point, and Bam wasn't, and uh, dude, I, Novak I, was always wasted. I often go back to to listen to like Radio Bam and stuff just for Novak. He's such a fucking ridiculous character. Yeah, I know he's fucking, and now he's completely sober. Like at this, like love and peace, and getting other people healed. He's not the same anymore. Anyway. And he looks super healthy. He does, and then Bam looks like his his dad. <laughs> he does fucking actually. Yeah, he looks crazy. like Phil. <laughs> It's like, what happened to you? Oh, this is fucking frightening. And you, at this point, like, in my head, I would be like, this is still an attraction, right? They're just trying to scare the living shit out of you. And when you get to these boundaries of attractions, right, if you can't, if you sign up for something or this is what you want, they will scare you almost to death. And that's yeah, the Yeah, so, like, it's like, where, where's the cutoff point? And, like, I do know that there is attractions out there that don't have safe words and stuff. So when you sign the waiver, you're in it till it's over. Obviously, now, I'm imagining on, you know, if you were to, like, ha- fucking have a heart attack or a stroke or some shit, they'll they'll stop. But outside of yeah. that, there's nothing that you can say to them that's going to stop the attraction. And then who has a mind like that to want to do this to people, too? Do you know what I mean? So then, and this is like... fulfilling some sort of thing. Yeah, and then you're kind of wondering, it's like, okay, so where is the cutoff point between, like, reality and... <sighs> Which again ties into yeah, that whole McCamey Manor bad. thing. Like it's like, like how much is too much, or what? Like okay, so this is supposed yeah. to be like an attraction, but like what's, what's attractive about any of this? 
You know what I was thinking for doing Patreon, but I think we should do it for like a main show. Is I have a written out I want to do it with Billy, but I think all four of us might be a fun thing. Is you ever heard of Action Park? That park where like that uh you ever heard of this uh Johnny uh Knoxville did a movie about it? I don't know. And it's just why like this that sounds um, really familiar. It's a essentially like a theme park, but they did so shadily like everything was made like shit and it was one they threw like a bunch of kids were working there and it was like people died at this place people got severely hurt look that shit up it's fucked i want to do a whole like long episode about it because it's just crazy that that even exists oh i do know the place you're talking about yeah that's in like new york or jersey or new jersey whatever. new jersey is that crazy and then just built these like rickety ass fucking like water slides and shit there's a doc about it and there's a movie about it that are both fairly good I want to talk about with Billy because Billy was just like, that's crazy. He'll make some like funny ass jokes. I'm sure. Cause it's like, it's such a crazy thing to like, be like, Oh, a kid flew off the slide and like died. <laughs> oh, this is fucking scary. Okay. So that's a chick that's holding yeah. the camera. Well, I that imagine. mask is pretty dope though. Like the skeleton mask. I like, kind of like that. Like, so she's on her own head. now at this point. They've taken everybody out. I think separately. Oh, that's fucking scary. At different locations, and she's the last one left now, of course. Is it, yeah, the female protagonist or antagonist or whatever? <laughs> There's going to be a video camera. Look, Jesus. <sighs> Your, is she say she's going to record everything she sees? Yeah, so I suppose that's a, a clever way of, like... Doing an attraction? It, well, a lot of times, you know, people ask the question of, like, yeah, but why would you still be videoing at this point? It's like, well, mm -hmm. that's kind of explained they, that in a way. They're like, you're going to do this or we're going to fucking stab yeah. the shit out of you. Have you played Phasmophobia ever? Uh, that game where you hunt for ghosts no but i've seen dude man we have to like have you watched the patreon of us do it the first time yeah you yeah. should watch it uh where me and juan and anton did it i i watched a lot of people playing that actually it looks super fun it's so funny man if me you and anton could do it i want to get billy to do it but it'll be it'd be hard he needs to get a good like laptop but like even all three of us that shit is fucking fun dude and you get like legit scared like i get the first time we played i was frightened oh all that stuff any any games like that outlast or anything like that make me shit my pants i was streaming outlast on twitch for a bit i'm like ha like a quarter way through the game it's fucking scary and the thing is I don't know if you've seen me bash my face in the mic, but like I've gotten super scared. It's on the Patreon for everyone. It's I played uh, at Dead of Night. You should watch me play through it because I cut it down with only the good parts. And it, it was one of the scariest games I've ever played in my life. This guy pops out of nowhere. It's probably so, some of the funniest things I've ever streamed. People were dying fucking watching me play it. Oh, this so is now I think scary. they all have cameras and they've all just been let out. So I think it's splicing between different people. Oh, fuck. This is fucking like, and the old couches in like 60s vibe. <laughs> I, th I think this is Ryan Dunn we're watching. Dude, I would shit my pants at this point. I'd pee because when did he pee last? I just like pee down my leg. Oh, fuck. Because it still kind of partly feels like, oh, yeah, this is probably part of this whole thing. Yeah, I know. Because they yeah, could have like, just why killed me. Think that? I don't like this. That whole, like, being alone. I Being yes. alone is frightening, man. That's why I've always talked about like like in especially recently. It's like imagine like doing mushrooms and like going to a haunted location or something like that. The energy because you don't feel a lot of fear if you know what kind you use. But oh man, oh that's fucking frightening. There's some movies when we were watching Smile. Chelsea was like, imagine being on mushrooms watching this when the chicks like her oh, face yeah. zooms into the screen. Freaky. Oh, fuck. I do not like the chainsaw shit, man. Yeah, he's just like, yeah, I'm done. Let me the fuck out of here. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, oh fuck. 
So now this is the dude, I think, Bobby. This is the guy who loves all this. This is his, like, idea. And even he's like, oh, okay, this is fucking terrible. That's crazy. This would be frightening, but at the same time, like, is this, like, a, just an attraction? Because if I knew for a fact that uh, something like this was an attraction, I might do it. But, like, I would want another person with me. I couldn't do it just yeah. on my own. Yeah. This is fucking scary. <laughs> You've no idea what's gonna yeah, happen. Because you're kind of wondering, you're like, are, are these just fucking with us to an extreme point here, or? Yeah, I know. Oh, I do not like that. That chainsaw sound, not knowing where it is, and it being pitch dark. <laughs> That's what I'd be like. I'd be screaming. Same. Uh, it's funny because like I like roller coasters, but at the same time I'm scared of them. When I go on them, Chelsea just sits there and laughs at me because it's like crazy. It goes like obviously like, we've got we've been on some big roller coasters, and I'm like all I go is fuck like the whole way. I scream the word fuck. I'm sure people behind me are like Jesus Christ. And I'm like I scream. I like uh, yeah, yell I, so loud. I love I absolutely love roller coasters and theme parks, but <sighs> exactly the same thing. I feel like for the same reasons, I'm equally afraid as I am yeah. like excited about the whole thing. There's a um, Wonderland and during COVID when they like first opened it, somebody, they got stuck on one of the roller coasters for like three hours. Like, fuck that, man. I couldn't do that. I'd go insane. Get me out of here. <laughs> I might be over exaggerating. It might be like an hour, but I feel like it was like a three hour thing. Like took a while. It's a good way to end the film because you ramp it up. The film you have to you have to ramp things up, and then it gets progressively worse in horror movies. And this is fucked. I would fucking freak out. So now you know it's a real chainsaw. Yeah, that's true. Actually, <laughs> are you gonna fuck my world? What did I my world do to you, brother? <laughs> like that's fucking crazy. I gotta fuck your world. Or did he say I'm gonna fuck your girl? I, I I don't know if this would be the point where I'd be like, anytime I saw outdoors, I'd be like, yeah, I'm out here. Yeah. Oh my fuck! Are you having fun, Bobby? That's scary. What the fuck? So is he dead now? Holy fuck. You know what's the scariest thing in the world? The fact that in some places, right, people, like, will take people and, like, take their organs. Yeah, it's fucked up. Like, that that shit is nuts. And I've heard stories and people think that it's, like, fake and shit like that, but that stuff happens. And I, I, I've said that story about that... Um, guy uh this guy was a pest control dude and he's the person that heard me talk about the illuminati and shit like that and then so he was also a reptile expert and he told me if your body were to inhabit your soul were to inhabit some sort of vessel or body a reptilian or reptile body would be kind of the best if it was a humanoid one because you could like if your limbs got cut off you can regrow them you can hibernate you can essentially uh -huh. that's what they do they can they can withstand different types of weather um so it would be a good thing to embody and this guy also told me a story of how his wife was like on a phone with her friend in like Romania and her son got like this chick's son got like stripped of his like guts in front of her and this van pulled up and everyone's like that story is real. I was like this guy told me it and said that this was like a real thing and his wife was on the phone with her friend as she was hearing this happen which is fucked if that yeah, holds idea, any like, validity the, uh, the idea like that you know people I know it happens to kids all the time but then the idea of like if it happened to like a full grown <sighs> adult where like they just get abducted off the street it ha it happens all the time it happened at the Br the brantford mall like not far from me and it's like a small city and this guy was going around and these people had like their vans open and stuff like that like their back trunks and it was like and Th dude like, that shit gives me over. fucking like goosebumps i know it's fucked man that that shit exists and the thing is especially as being a female it's more because they get put in the sex trade and stuff mm -hmm. like that even in canada and in places like the states and like it happens all over being buried alive is also a fucking crazy fear. Like, fuck that. Do you watch Cabinets of Curiosity yet? Yeah. 
the fucking rat one, man, did not like that shit. I liked it as it was scary, but it made me feel weird ways. I was like, I don't like this. So now they're all buried or heat. I can't believe my brother's never seen House of Thousand Corpses and he's watching it today. And I was like, I, I hope he has fun with that shit. Where they he they he buries all of them and then they go down that fucking thing into Doctor Satan's fucking <laughs> thing. I do not like like the the idea of being so enclosed. No way out. I don't like that. So, I'm just gonna say it now that we have okay. to watch this one. I'm definitely down. This uh, is fucking don't, fun. Yeah, but don't look up anything else about it because I'm just remembering yeah. here now that to get any context to this story, you have to see the sequel. Okay. Because I think from what I remember, yeah, this gets left on like a massive like, just like, yeah, it doesn't, it just kind of goes. Yeah, I know. I was like, this is almost over. And then this movie like reveals a lot of what was going on. No, we for sure can do that. We should almost uh, release them in a row. Mm -hmm. Like one after the other. Yep. That was fucking... Is that how it ended? That's fucked. Yeah, that's a weird thought. Yeah. Yeah. A messed up thing that is in my head. That's why I said, like, the psychology behind, like, wanting to scare the shit out of people and play a character. Escapism, man. That's why it's, people yeah. dress up like fucking Thor and, shit and go to comic cons. <laughs> and you know what? Like, it's it's not out of the realm of possibility to think maybe some of these people, at least a very small percentage of them, may actually be fucking psychotic. Yeah. Think about how your brains work. Like the thing is, every, everyone I think suffers from some sort of mental health, and I think it's getting it's progressively gotten worse. But at, even back in the day, it was like deal with it, and your dad would beat you and fucking drink his whiskey. That shit was fucking pretty good. I actually really enjoyed that. There were some scenes actually like the idea creeps me out, and it does. That was fucking. I I do I give that like a fucking seven point five. Maybe like you know. I think, I think when you when you see the sequel. That was cool. It it ties everything in a lot better when you see. Because now I want to know. Um, yeah, yeah. You no. Know? Yeah, I there think was a it was part even uh, when we watched Barbarian. I was like, are they going to end this on some weird shit and like you don't really know? Um, I want to do a uh, review on that movie, and we should do it sooner than later because it is fresh. But um, that fucking movie, I have uh, things to say. It's strange. That shit's. This was pretty good. I liked it. Um. I'll be yeah. interested to see now what what you think about uh about the sequel because I was actually shocked when I seen the sequel and how they went about the whole thing because it's not as straightforward as you would think. It's yeah. uh, without without giving too much away. It's not um, the story doesn't pick up and kind of go where you think it might. I kind of like this was fairly good. I thought it was a good concept. I thought they uh, executed it well. I did. Yeah. Like, I thought that was like, a fun film. Like, something and like, how you're kind of going through the film uh, like you're on your own haunted attraction while mm -hmm. you're watching it. Because essentially the way it's filmed is like it's someone with a camera in their hand and you're kind of experiencing what they're going through. I kind of like that aspect where you could do it where um, Hellfest kind of looks like this but different of like going to a haunted attraction. I want to talk about, I've never seen that either and like to do a commentary on that. I fucking but. love that movie. I, really? Is I it that good? I mentioned it before. I have the mask right there. I've never seen it. So that will be something that's fun to go into. I like one of these films I've never seen. From a lot of what we've it, talked about today, you know, between haunted attractions, theme parks, roller coasters, yeah. Halloween, all that kind of stuff. Like uh, a movie like Hellfest, I think would be right up our... Again, it's not going to win any Oscars or any Academy no. Awards or anything, but it's just a fun. Halloween I'm into movie. like I'm getting to like the, just watching movies for fun and just like seeing how I like them. Especially, uh, Aaron sent me in um, Anton a movie that's called what is that called The Muscle Body Builder from Hell or some shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was like, <laughs> I was like laughing. I was like, we could probably get away with doing a watch party of that one because that movie I've never even heard of it. And I don't think anyone has. Bloody muscle bodybuilder in hell. 
That sounds fucking and so weird. The, the plot is in this legendary independent Japanese cult film, uh, alternatively known as the Japanese Evil Dead, a bodybuilder Fuck trapped inside a haunted house must, must survive a blood-soaked night of insanity to save himself and his friends from a demonic ghost that is hell-bent on revenge. That sounds fucking funny. The, the, the I first, feel like I'm going to make fun of it. The first review oh, just man. says, uh, light-hearted and quite comical. Wouldn't watch it again, but lots of blood, bad acting, and attacking <laughs> limbs. An easy watch. Wouldn't watch it again. <laughs> That's fucked. There's some like ugh, some scary shit out there, and like I think it's fun to go into these movies objectively, and it's like especially if I haven't seen them. Like, I like that, and there's tons of stuff like coming because I every time we watch something, I'm like, oh, we should definitely do this. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, oh my god, it's it keeps happening. It's fucking funny because uh um uh hill uh the hills have eyes is fucking frightening. That that's like, one the, I that I really remake, would like to do. Those, those two. I want to do a review. I want to just talk about it and get some like facts about the film because the second one, uh, we could talk about the movies as a whole even because the second one gives me, remember, see, I think I saw that one in theaters too and it gave me weird feelings. I was like, why are they doing this weird fucking rapey, like uh, grotesque people like to, inbred to take their baby? It's fucked, man. Like, I, I like, love those fuck? two movies. The second so one, well like, they went so dark. Yeah, I know. I mean, uh, there, yeah, there's a point where dragging it's like, the military oof. people in and like it's like. I actually, actually interviewed the guy who played. Um, is it Papa Hades or whatever the main guy? Oh really? Yeah, I interviewed him a while ago. He actually played Super Freddy in. In. Uh, oh yeah, I think I remember that. I've watched all yeah. those like docs, man. Like in, with in depth. No, I, this was fun. Um. Yeah, my final thoughts was I'm excited to see where the fuck the second one goes because yeah, I, the, I think enjoyable. I think to be honest, it's it's weird because from rewatching it again now, I kind of it was starting to come back to me, and I was like, it, it kind of feels like it has to be a double bill, um, because you're yeah. left with no real context of like, wait, what? So are they? Is this is this an attraction? Are they dead? <laughs> Uh, yeah, you could leave it just on that cliffhanger of them being buried alive and not understand what these people do. But it's smart for him if this did well, right? Which it seems like it probably did as an yeah, indie it film. Done, yeah, it done quite well. And then be like, well, I can just draw people in because now they've seen this one and then they can throw more money at it to make it even a little better. Because that's a possibility too. Some movies don't always do that. It sometimes gets really bad, even with like slasher films where it's just like, mm -hmm. people love this shit. Let's just throw money at it and make it in four months. It's just like, that's not yeah. a good idea. Yeah, and it's just like <laughs> you're just churning out movies for the sake of it. Yeah, and I would like to talk about like the slasher films and stuff like that too. And like we don't even have to talk about a specific Nightmare Elm Street, like the whole scheme of the movies and stuff like Friday Thirteenth. But I do think uh, we've talked about which I think would be fun to do a commentary on all the Friday Thirteenth movies and start at one point and just post it like every week as like a bonus thing, and then just do it till we're done. It I'd be down be for that. Funny. I mean, I'd do that. <laughs> I was so would I. It would be uh, fairly funny. And we, then we could be like onto it, something it there. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was just gonna say. Um, you know, if it's fun and people enjoy it, we could potentially do that with like all the franchises. You know, you've uh, another one I would love yeah, to do is true, Hellraiser. Yeah. Hellraiser's fucked. I watched the fourth and uh, fifth one recently, and I was like, these are fucking bad. It's so bad. It's but it's. Have you seen the newest like, one? No. I'm wanting. I'm excited for it. I would watch it today. Actually, maybe I don't know. Is I'll it good? Because I I'll give it a thumbs up. See, and I like. Um, Anton says something about how he like he thought it was okay, but I was like, I think I'll like it. I, yeah, like it's not. It's I, not amazing, but honestly, right? I was. I always see Pinhead as Doug Bradley. So like when I first yeah, seen that they were like recasting, and then especially when they were recasting as a chick, I know it's closer to the source material that Clive Barker had, but. I don't know, I was a bit like, oh, fuck this. Like, I was like, and again, I don't mean to offend anybody, but I yeah. was like, are we going down the route of being like, okay, next we have to have like a lesbian fucking pinhead and then we have to have a black pinhead and we have to have a, an Asian pinhead. and Gay and Michael I was, Myers. Yeah, like I was kind of worried <laughs> that maybe they were doing it for those reasons, but after watching it, I'm actually quite surprised. You can tell that they I were using... I liked her voice, man. Yeah, the they were using her the source material. Her voice sounds fucking trippy. 
Yeah, it's, and it's, that's it's really a cool. So watch. that kind of excites me. Yeah, because I watch. I wanted to watch Judgment Day. That seemed like you said. Didn't you say it was? Eh. It's it, uh, some of the other characters that they created and brought into it were fun, but on a whole, I was just kind of like pff, Pinhead is really forgettable. Did you ever watch like, Fat Pinhead? Because I never did. Did you ever watch the Fat Pinhead one? It's like uh, how was it Revelations or some shit? Oh, you've seen the, the Fat Pinhead, right? Yeah, no, I, I, I don't think I've watched. It. I think I've seen like bits of it. But you've seen the pictures, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's just like fucking why, like they just picked this overweight dude. It's nothing against him, but it's just like it just wasn't a right choice. Because Doug Bradley is pinhead. You can't take it like just like when they try to have Jack Healy or whatever as uh, Freddie Krueger. Yeah, you can't have so, like you can't do that. It's a tough sell. Like it's so hard to once you've established a character, it's so hard to like go. Okay, now it's gonna be this person. No, I agree. I'm excited to see the new Hellraiser with the chick. I think I am gonna like it because I read some reviews and people are like, oh, it's all right. People liked it, and I'm like, okay, guys, I want to watch this for myself because there's some movies out there that people think are fucking awful, which I like. People constantly shit on Halloween Resurrection, and guess what? I like it. It's on the Patreon now if you want to hear a commentary on it, but it's a fun film. And the people are like, well, you know how good H2O was, and I was like, they're equally as bad in their own right. <laughs> Yeah, I I enjoy I enjoy Resurrection. I don't care. Fuck everybody. Yeah, I know. Just I, I see, keep reading people saying Halloween ends and Resurrection are both the worst. And I'm like, what about Rob Zombie's Halloween too? <laughs> just like, I uh, I still haven't seen Halloween ends, and I don't think I'm ever gonna watch it. I want. I feel like I f should finish it. You know what we should do? Let's do a commentary on it so we can literally take our hate out onto it. We can do I, we can have Anton on too. I would actually like that because I haven't seen it at all. Like I've seen some of the spoilers and whatever, but it will be interesting, I think, because I'm Don't such watch a huge. It. We'll go into it. Yeah, because I'm such a, a a big Myers fan and a Halloween fan yeah, that I, I feel like, but not in the sense of like a lot of people are like, oh my god, you've like the mythos of Michael. It's not even that, yeah. like, but I've just seen some of the weird shit where there's like a teenager beating the shit out of Michael Myers and stuff. And I'm like, fuck off. Yeah, I know. Fuck no, off. I, I didn't, I didn't like it. I turned it off halfway because literally I didn't like it that much. And I thought I was, I, I honestly, the first for half an hour, 40 minutes, I was like, okay, I can, this could be okay. And then it took a drastic turn where I'm like, no, no. How could you like, get it so wrong though? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's weird because that that, that, that trilogy, like it, it started off like up here and then it's just gone way down. And people like hate number four and five. People constantly were like, I watch Halloween ends over four and five. And I was like, they're fun. He goes down a river. It's so fun, man. He like gets in the river and he fucking. Yeah, and you can see he has his like life vest on when he's like floating around and shit. That's amazing. I sent you guys a clip of that because I was watching it. I'm like, around Halloween, I was like, so funny that he just like tosses and turns down like this little river and then it's he so kind of like gets looking. out of it. It's, it's like, so, well, so weird looking. And also, <laughs> another thing I think. <laughs> Uh, so funny. That same team, uh, I think before Halloween Ends came out, they announced yeah. that they signed on to do uh, an Exorcist trilogy. And I'm going to go, right? I'm going to go on record <laughs> now and say they are going to fucking brutalize whatever you thought The Exorcist was or whatever yeah. you enjoyed about The Exorcist. They are going to absolutely chew that up and vomit it out everywhere. It's going to be awful. Yeah, it's it. Uh, this might sound for him. That's good. Like, it's gonna be uh, someone who gets possessed, and then they turn into a trans person while they're like under the under the possession of the demon, and they start dressing differently, and then it's just like it's gonna take that turn. He, him, they, them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, um. That was. What does he say when he's like throwing the fucking holy um, water at them? Uh. <laughs> I can't uh, think of it now. Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, the power of yeah. Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. It's like they, them, the... <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs> no, I, I, get what, I, 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 I get where you were going with that one. I was trying to I'll go for try a joke and it just yeah, didn't get I was trying right. to think of something along the lines of that and I was like, <laughs> wait, I don't know if I can pull this off. No, no. This is like my uh, Dahmer chocolate factory joke. I wanted to say it the entire time, and then I was like, uh, it, it hits differently when I say it. Mm. Mm. <laughs> that shit was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we both made some bad jokes, but at least yours got cut out. 
I, yeah, I made a really bad mistake there. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to repeat it. That was nope. a lot of fun. I like doing the commentaries, man. Um, and the thing is, when we get into I could always talk for hours. And I got, like, stoned halfway, and then the ending was, like, tripping me out. Like, it was – I like the that builds up. And then, essentially, you would be, like, frightened, especially if you're going somewhere where, like, you had a couple beers – and maybe like I wouldn't smoke a lot of weed going to a haunted attraction because your fucking senses would be yeah. up more and you'd be like, I'd I want to go I, s- sober or kind of drunk. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing uh, your reaction to the sequel, to be honest, and and the the turns and twists the whole story takes. Um, I think that'll be fun. It'll it'll be. A, we should a, do that fun, soon. We can even do yeah. that next week when post recording to this or whatever. Yeah, it'll be a it'll be a fun. I think bookend to that whole thing because this kind of leaves it on a weird like. We don't really know what went on. You got the whole like lead no, you up, don't. Yeah. and then like right as shit's about to happen, it's like oh, it's over. We do, I, don't. I asked like you don't have to spoil it too much, but do they explain like who these people are to an extent, or do they leave e- it still e- a mystery? Yeah, and and there's okay. there's a there's a a couple of twists and turns in it that I did not expect at all. Yeah, like I'm like, kind of I, excited. I think he'll to, like, genuinely be like, shit. what? You know, it's another fun movie, and like, there's like, we'll never run out of doing this. But um, uh, okay, Puppet Master. That movie's fucking weird. That, that movie's a fucking is weird, weird movie. I know the whole. Fr- I didn't see the new one. It looked weird though. Like the there's Nazi a, puppet. Like yeah, whatever it's that like was the about. Puppet Master and the Third Reich or something like that. I was like, why yeah. did you guys go that, that direction? That's so strange. It's like people love Hitler. It's like no, this is not a good idea. That's Have really you seen like, Dead Snow or whatever? That's really bottom of the barrel though, isn't it? When you're like got I to know. the point where it's like, what can we pick? This is gonna be ridiculous. Uh Dead that's Snow like is amazing. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I don't like read subtitles, but it was good. That's the only thing like I every <laughs> now and again I see it and I'm like, I really want to watch this again, but I was like, Oh, it's in a different language. I can't be bothered. I Have know, you seen the I don't like it. I can't help it. Um no, I don't think so. I just watched bits and pieces of it and I was like, this is fun. I just don't like reading subtitles. I can't help yeah, it. Even if it's if it's dubbed, it's even worse. Oh yeah. Because then terrible. it's like the the voices don't match up, and I'm like, I can't. My brain will go insane. I have to agree with you there. Like a lot of times, I have the subtitles on passively when it's in English, but if it's in another language or it's dubbed and there's subtitles and stuff, it just like I don't know whether but, I'm too retarded or whatever. Yeah, or I, just, I, I like so I just like because my brain, I read the thing, I just keep reading it, and I'm not looking up to pay attention to like what's actually happening. But I, I would though do commentaries with subtitles in like um like a Japanese like some sort of fucked up Japanese horror film like some weird shit that essentially I can just talk over with you and Anton or something where we're both going like and just reading it kind of while talking about what's going on in this fucking weird film. Do you know what like, would be that an interesting? Fun. What it would be interesting to do the original ring. Oh, I've never seen it. Neither have I. Right, you ring re, you or whatever. Yeah, and it's supposed Ryu, to be terrifying. Is that what it's called? It's supposed to be I've really it's fucking scary. scary. Yeah, it's supposed to be we really fucking scary. Stuff like that, I think it's something different. Even if it's for the Patreon or the main show, because it depends. This could even go to the main show. It depends what we feel like throwing up on Patreon, what commentaries we think we want on a paywall, or whatever. But this was fairly fun. Yeah, I'm excited now to do the sequel at some point soon. Yeah, we'll do that. I will even like next week, within the next week or two, and they'll come mm-hmm. out probably in this, like the, a two week succession would be a smart idea. Um, for everybody listening, uh, as always, make sure and check yeah. out www.classhorrorcast.com and strangebrewpodcast.com. Uh, yep. We're both on basically every Instagram. social media platform. Instagram, but Twitter, most- fuck Twitter. I don't like Twitter, man. Yeah, fuck Elon Musk as well. He's <laughs> starting to fucking annoy me now as well. I'm like, oh. I know. I don't go on Twitter. Never have, never liked it. There is a one that Anton runs, and he used to post things, but he doesn't really anymore. Like I was like, "Can you run it?" I, he's like, "I'll run the t- uh, the Twitch or the Twitter." And I was like, "I don't go on Twitter." I went out for a bit, but when I start reading stuff, it makes me angry because there's a lot of dumb people on Twitter, like really pe- dumb people that have no idea what they're actually saying, and they like are so like, "I love the liberal government, even though they're destroying my lives." <laughs> like it's so crazy. It's a uh... I have Twitter. Uh, I couldn't tell you the last time I ever tweeted anything. I probably tweeted like 10 times since I've had the account. Um, hey, horror boy Aaron here. Check yeah, out my new Yeah, it's just show. like fucking, I don't know, just something like Twitter to me is it's just toxic. Like, it's cancer. It's just awful. Yeah, I know. And I think it's, it's, it's like, why be... does I need to know your opinion about everything? 
Uh, and you know what, right? I thought when I seen that whole thing, like with Elon Musk, uh, you know, supposedly buying it and different things, I was like, oh, this could make a yeah. cool turn and he might like try and undo some of the shit that the other social media platforms do. And he just seems to be leaning into it. Now, now he's become, to me, he's become more of like a social media influencer than he is anything else. I'm like, oh, just shut yeah, the fuck up. She, I, people think he's uh, the Antichrist. I don't think that, but I think he's fucking kind of crazy. And I don't trust these people. I never trusted Elon Musk and all this stuff. And it is funny because like, we just don't have, like we have the Twitter, but I just, it seems like a toxic yeah, terrible. environment. A terrible, so I can't terrible like keep place. up with it. It's like, if you listen to the show, cause you generally want to hear uh, you just want to hear our opinions and stuff like that. Like that's obviously what we're doing, but for you just like people just be like, I hate yeah, this I person so because fuck. of this. And they like, just type there like of the people that like are for Trudeau and against Trudeau. Like it's both like Trudeau is horrible, but the people that are for him. Like you're doing a great job, sir. It's, it's fucking veterans day or we do uh the Memorial day or whatever. It's just like, you're going to go to Cambodia. And then he like, he left to Cambodia during our like fucking national holiday for the soldiers that died to fight for this country and stuff like that and it's just like scum <laughs> what scum <laughs> it's fucking crazy scum. um but it, that's why it twitter is to me is toxic and that's why i choose not to have it it's fine to post things like Ant anton can run that shit but not my thing but instagram is the best way to find us we just went and ran about fucking twitter so, for a second so what tom is saying is he's only on twitter he doesn't have a website he doesn't have a youtube <laughs> or any other social medias he only has twitter don't um, harass my Twitter. It's got like 50 <laughs> followers. <laughs> if uh, if you're watching the video aspect of this, uh, you might have seen up above our heads, there's been a constant ticker of the two yeah. websites as well. So if you haven't taken that in over the last two hours, uh, take a yeah, second now to website. do so. Yeah. There's, and there's yeah, merch designs coming and stuff like stuff. that. Yeah, there's lot, there's merch also coming with our faces on it. It's gonna be fun. Um, and then as this, there's there's fun stuff coming for the merch. It might not come out for a couple months, but there is designs in the works for like all of us and stuff like that. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I love good merch, and I I feel like I've never actually taken the time to to get some done. But I I love when people have good merch. We have a bunch of fun designs on the stranger. Like, cause I've developed some fun stuff that kind of threw together that I think looks pretty dope. I rep it all the time. I was like, I'm not wearing it right now, but I do have a bunch of my shirts that I wear all the time that I just kind of created out of like certain images and stuff like that. But now we're actually getting real like merch to developed and designed and people drawing out something cohesively. And it's going to be, there's some fun shit coming. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. I'm excited. All right. Well, uh, I guess, uh, stay strange and stay tuned for the next number two. Yeah, and I, I still don't have any sort of catchy outro thing. So, um, yeah, do what Tom said. Peace out, brother. Bye. <laughs> I don't know what the accent was.